on this computer and recording. Fantastic. Well, here we are at the December Hydrate video chat. Shauna, go ahead, introduce yourself. Hi, I am Shauna Banning and I am in Indiana in Greenfield and I'm a children's pastor at a church called Real Life Church and yeah, been in children's ministry for about 15 years and I love it. That's awesome. Love it. And then we have Kristen and Christina. Kristen's been on every video chat so far. And Christina joined last month. It was awesome. She's the only one that's close to me. Yeah. Right? Because Kristen, you're in where you're in another state too, aren't you? Yeah, I'm in Indiana. We're in South Bend. So we're pretty close to the Michigan state line, but not quite as far as you guys. Yeah, so I'm I am over in the Michigan. Right, do you have snow, Christina? No, it's sunny. Do any of you guys have snow? Nope. I was just gone. This has been a crazy winter. No, I'll it's take like it. 45 degrees outside and sunny. Yeah, ours is sunny. It's beautiful outside. It is beautiful, but I'm going to be honest, and I know most Michiganders won't say this. I kind of want the snow to come back for just a little bit. Just one yeah. big dump of snow. Yeah, my husband plows, so I, I kind of like the snow. You need like, it. It's yes, funny. You need yeah. it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. All right, well, here. Uh, one, I'm so glad you guys are here. I, you know, I'm not trying to dump my week on you guys, but uh, I apologize if my communication's a little off right now. Um, it's just been a, it's been crazy back at, well, here at our, with our team. So we are pulling everything together and uh, I'm, but I'm glad you guys are here. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the content so far that Hydrate's been pushing out. It's some great stuff, great videos. Um, and then even the two minute drills that Pastor Kelly puts out on the online stuff. Those are some of my favorite little nuggets of knowledge. I've actually used some of those and brought them back to my team and like, Hey, you got to check out this two minute drill guys. That's it. And I'll share it to them. So, um, I know that, uh, pastor Kelly's encouraged us. If there's stuff you like, push it to your team. So that's what it's here for, you know? So don't, don't feel like it's for your eyes only, um, use it to grow your team, which is great. Cause we're talking about team growth today. Yeah. Uh, here is our creative question for today. All right. So I want you guys to think about what was your most favorite vacation memory as a child most vaca favorite vacation memory as a child and and then maybe why does this memory stand out if you hear squeaking noises it's because my roof is right here <laughs> that's cool i get that at my roof too <laughs> when i'm in the basement <laughs> squeak, 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 squeak. yeah Okay, um, who will start? I can start. Go for it. All right, so um, we didn't do a lot of vacation. As far as, like, at your childhood memory or, or if right? If you have to open it up to, like, vacation, then do that because I don't have a, a kid vacation either that I can think of. Yeah, I can't so think of. Let's that. open it up. Favorite family vacation or vacation and why? Okay, let me start thinking again. Hang on. Open it up a little better because – because I actually don't have it. I didn't go on vacation as a kid either. Mm -mm. Mm. Yeah, we didn't, um, we didn't go on vacation a lot as a kid. There was maybe a handful of times that we went. And um, it would probably be, uh, and as adults now, we don't. We have five kids, and they're all really little. So we don't really get a lot of vacation time in. <laughs> so uh, once when they get older, I'm sure it will be better. But anyway, so as a kid, my mom would take us all to Cedar Point. So there was one year we got to go with my uncle and cousins. And it was, I, I don't know, it was, it was a good time. But it was then when, you know, my mom and my uncle would go by themselves. And then I, as a maybe fourth grader, maybe, um, with my cousin that was the same age as me, him and I would go off by ourselves. And like, you know, it was like, you can't do that now, which is funny. But it was just good because it was like, you know, we felt so free and like, we can do whatever we want. You know, we can go on any ride we want, no matter if our parents want to or not. So um, I would say that's the one that really sticks with me the most, but um, not really for any specific reason, but other than that's probably it. So <laughs> the only vacation, big memory anyway, but it was good. 
gosh, they disappeared. Shauna, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I would say um, just as kids, we didn't vacation a ton either. My dad was a pastor, but we did go camping a lot. Mm. And um, we loved that time. But um, just as a family, we have four kids too. And um, this past summer, we went to Chicago in July and met our best friends there. And it was just like a time to relax. There was no like extended family obligations and so like we just had to focus on our family and have fun and it was great awesome love it yep. christina I would, yeah i would say i was gonna go back like as a child as a kid i remember going to um we went a couple times to mexico with my family and it was a whole different way of living because my parents lived in a, a whole different way but um we would my favorite part of going to visit our family in mexico was, was jumping in the river that's how they bathed and that's where they washed, did their laundry and all that kind of stuff. So we did all that as a kid and I remember it being so much fun, I loved it. But as an adult with my own kids, um, we try to make it to Michigan Adventure with my siblings and all the cousins and that's super fun, we love it. Every year we do that and um, I usually end up with the youngest ones because I don't get on the big rides because I'm such a chicken and that's okay. <laughs> And I usually tell them that I'm just not tall enough, just like them. They're, they're too short. And so I hang out with the little people and I tell them I'm too short and you're too short. So we just can't get on the rides. And they're like, no, you're not. I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> so that's like my favorite part with the kids. I love it. I, I, I have since gone away from the phrase being short and I reference myself as fun sized. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm taking it. <laughs> I'm fun size. I'm a oh, fun size. I love that quote you have on your wall. Be a flamingo and a flock of pigeons. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. And I love your decorations in the back corner there, Kristen. Yeah. Um, this is, if I get bored while we're on the call, I hope I mean, you're going to play, you know? It was the only quiet place in the house. My husband took the kids somewhere else, so I was like, "Man, I gotta hide." <laughs> That's awesome. My little my little guys upstairs eating everything. Um, That's right. Favorite time, snack time. <laughs> man, uh, so true story. My first vacation was my honeymoon when I got married. That was my first vacation ever. Wow. Um, and we, <laughs> that's the only one I can think of. And then we went on a legit vacation. Uh, my second year into Michigan, and my my in laws paid for our flight, which was phenomenal, to go to Puerto Rico as a family. So we got to go to Puerto Rico because my whole family was from Puerto Rico, and so we uh, we flew to Puerto Rico, and we were there for a week, and it was uh, it was awesome. And I'll never go to Puerto Rico with my in laws ever again. Uh, so I'd love to go to Puerto Rico again, just not with them. <laughs> but it was a great time great experience and uh i i enjoyed it a lot so that's 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 the really the only two i got other than that we i've been in travel city that's about it <laughs> all right let's jump right into our our leadership sequence so this past month did you guys all get to the videos and catch up to that so you got to watch team building with kelly pastor kelly we talked about team building part one team building is a huge probably one of the most important aspects of being a kids pastor and kids team leader is the team building. Without a team, we cannot do it. Um, we can do all we want by ourselves, but we will we will dry up, we will get discouraged, we will get burnt out. We need a team. And so I loved this segment, particularly this month and the next few segments about team building. Um, so here's our first question. Ministry can be very busy and demanding. Ready or not, Sunday comes every week. And then there are midweek and special ministry days as well. Why do you think building great kids ministry teams are important? Okay, I've got a good one. Um, so, or I guess it was more of a real life thing that happened. So last week, uh, or sorry, not last week, the week before, my whole family got insanely sick. Like, oh. I couldn't even get out of bed sick. And so um, I lead Wednesdays. I, I work on Sundays, but I lead Wednesdays for like all the kids groups. So I not get out of bed. And usually I do like I, you know, I have everything printed. I get all the like the technology stuff set up, um, you know, just have everything ready to go. So I couldn't do it. I, could, I couldn't do any of this stuff. So um, 
Diane is my my second person. So I just called her and I was like, well, I text her because I couldn't talk on the phone. So anyway, so I text her and I was like, Diane, I am so sick. I can't. I just can't. I won't be there. Um, can you take the lead? And she's like, yep, we got this. So, you know, they all came together. And I have a rotation where um, teachers will get a day off once a month. So, uh, but they all teamed up together and took care of everything. So I didn't even have to worry. So everything was great. Nothing was missed. And, and it just went on like, you know, like I was or wasn't there. So it was great. It was so good to have a team to be able to do that because if they weren't there, I don't know what we would have done, you know, if I w wouldn't have been able to get there. So great example. But it, awesome. but it was great. It was great. Perfect. I would say ditto to that. That's like, um, always nice to know that if, something happens to you, you can um, rely on a team. Um, I would say about two years ago, I had a, a major surgery and I was gone for about a month and um, I relied on, on my team um, to run everything. And um, I mean, even within that time, I remember there being a sledding event and every time it kept pushed back because the weather was too bad and in January and um, and I remember there was a group of people that just um, it, within our team that created a skating event and uh, on their own. And I was like, oh, thank God. And I was gone. So that was awesome. But mm -hmm. always, it's always nice to know that you can rely on other people when you're, like you said, you need a break, <laughs> take a vacation day or anything like that. It's nice. So it's important. And then it's also, it just feels good when you see um, kids going to other people to be ministered to that you know are good people and they're solid so that's that's always nice awesome yeah. mm -hmm. i think for me your team is so important because without them you reach you reach your lid your ceiling a lot faster you can't do as much and be um, as effective without them and um, when a ministry rises and falls on one person it's never a good thing you burn out and there's just so many um, bad things, but I just, yeah, a team is so, so important. Mm -hmm. I love that you use the phrase, reach your lid. Yeah. Uh, are you a reader by chance? Um, I, I try really hard at being a reader. <laughs> it's in a lot of, a lot of leadership books talking about your lid capacity. And so, yeah. um, yeah, a great team will help you increase your own lid and yes. you're right. If you don't have a team, you'll reach your lid quick. That's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. I wanted to read this verse, and then I'm going to ask an, uh, almost kind of like a dreaming question. So 2 Timothy 2.2 2 says, You have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. And that's exactly what we get to do as leaders. We get to teach these truths to other trustworthy people so that they can pass them on to others because we cannot do it ourselves. And Paul was great at that. And he taught that and did a phenomenal job at making sure that the church leaders continued to do that. How could an additional two to three leaders or more impact? Let me reference this with your heart. How could two or three more leaders with your heart impact your kids ministry? Yeah, I think, um, wow, yeah, that's a really good question. I, if I had two to three more people, I know where I would put them um, because we, uh, we struggle um, getting men to volunteer. Um, so for our rangers, our rangers kind of struggle. So, and then also men in our Sunday big group. Um, so I don't know why, um, but so I feel like, even just this past Sunday, our pastor was talking about um, Joseph and being a father to Jesus and just how big of an impact that is. And I can tell a difference, especially on Sundays when we have, you know, this big group of kids and there's not a strong male leader up there. They don't see the men um, worshiping and they don't see the men um, participating. So when we have like our, you know, third, fourth and fifth grade boys that are kind of too cool to be in there, then not seeing a man being able to do that. I feel like we're just like missing that gap where they could really be, you know, be touched. And so, um, and that's really important to me, especially having all girls because, you know, these men are going to, or these young boys are going to be husbands to my girls, you know, and I want them to have that spiritual, you know, I want them to be able to connect in that way. 
So having somebody to be able to show them what it looks like, you know, that, that men aren't too cool to do this. So for us in our, in our setting, that's kind of a big part that we're struggling with. So having two, three men in would be amazing for us. Love it. Great answer. I'm just trying to think uh, about your question. You said two or three more people with your heart and what that would look like. Um, yeah, it would be great to have two or three more people that um, are just more sold out to what you're sold out to and passionate about. But I think it would come with more challenges as well if you had the mm. same amount of leaders with the same strengths and all that. But just to have the people that are dedicated with the heart and passion, um, it would enable you to do a lot more. Absolutely. A lot more. That's good. Uh, I, I think like having two or three more leaders would be great. I mean, I... I was looking at um, what Kelly put, I can't remember if it was this video, I watched a couple to catch up, but <laughs> where he put, um, list out the whole year, January through uh, December, and each, each month recruit a certain amount of people. What's this video? Was it this video? Okay, see, I was catching it. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I was thinking about that, I was thinking like, wouldn't it be so cool if I could get even more leaders? Um, yeah, I feel like I have a core group, but um, with my heart, I think I have only a couple and I would love to have more that have the same passion, but I would feel like, um, I think it would just, I mean, with I know last, last segment we talked about, um, I talked to you about uh, maybe getting a group of kids that would help me uh, lead worship and that kind of stuff. So I would like to find a leader that would have a heart with worship and to be able to take that on uh, because I'm not the, good, the best at like dancing or choreography and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it would, be, it would do some awesome things. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Great answers. All right, here's a good question that uh, I got from a friend of mine named Andy Vanderlinden who's a, who was a kid's pastor in – Pennsylvania for like now he's an executive pastor, but he's got a great blog called Organized Kid Mid, which I would absolutely recommend you check out. Organized Kid Min. And uh, the question is this, how many more leaders do you need to take your kid ministry to the next level? How many more leaders do you need to take your kids ministry to the next level? And what are you doing now? Really is the follow-up question to find those people. Huge question. I know, yeah. that's a good question. Mm -hmm. How many more leaders do you need to take it to the next level? I would need a lot. Like, probably between 20 and 30. Because we have four services every weekend. And so just trying to staff every service to take it to the next level, like, it would, it would, like, one or two obviously would be great, but, like, to take every service, every classroom to the next level, it would, it would take a lot. Yeah. I can totally understand that. Yeah. Absolutely. This is like a dream big question. Yeah. And, and, and I'm sure for each of us, that next level might look different and that's okay. But what, what does that look like for you guys? Oh, I'd say the same thing. 20. I mean, well, I mean, I feel like I have enough leaders to run the classes, but I, I feel like, like, I think last time we talked, I talked about like check-in, wanting a little bit more um, staff in that area on Wednesday nights. Um, so I would say for my Wednesday nights, I would want like 10 more would be awesome <laughs> just on Wednesday. So, yeah. That's awesome. If yeah. Oh, go ahead. Listen, go ahead. Go. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, I we staffed our, our Wednesdays for the girls. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of almost at my dream for the girls, which is amazing because that was a, I know I told you the story, but it was just a huge blessing because I, I just, you know, I came in over the summer and started this year as my first year, but I, I just first just, you know, prayed because last year we only had three women teachers and maybe three or four men. So it really wasn't a lot. And so um, I just, we have a really big women's group at our church. So I just typed my heart out on a paper and put a sign up and I went to one of the women's services and just, you know, just told them what I'm doing and what I'm looking for and what I need. And I cried. So I think they were all like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> it wasn't intentional, but 
you know, just just letting them understand like why it's so important because I feel like sometimes Wednesdays get swept under the rug a little bit just because it's not as big of a focus as Sundays can be. But, you know, just, just letting them all understand that, you know, what we need, what we're looking for. Um, I ended up getting 10 teachers on a Wednesday night. So, um, and just in women's, that's not even including the men's and our rainbows, like the little ones either. So um, I think, you know, but having, if I were able to have more people to do um, more like small ministry type stuff, like outings, like to go out and do stuff or to take over like little stuff, like sending birthday cards or like going to lunch with the girls during school, you know, during the week, that would probably blow them away, you know, like, oh my gosh, my teacher from, you know, um, so having stuff to be able to do that. But like I said, we're our men, like having more men up there would be awesome. But the same thing to have, because they go on camping trips and stuff. So it's really cool. But having more men to do that, I feel like would really, um, facilitate more kids to be able to come too. you know, at the same time. But, um, yeah, anyway, so that I, I it's just, it's been amazing this year so far. So I'm just excited. <laughs> awesome. I, this past year, probably February, March, um, we sat down as a team, just something that we've tried to do, and, and we wrote down, like, what is our maximum capacity in our rooms? Okay, so maximum capacity, let's say it's 125 kids in one room, 150 kids in the other room. That's per service. So per service, how many volunteers do we need to run that service? And then how many volunteers do we need to excel in that service? Mm -hmm. And then where are we now? Are we close? Are we far? What is our goal? And so it gave us an idea to say, oh, man, we need, we need 20 liters per room per service to, to even get to minimum. That's not even excelling. Just to, and that's if we were to, man, if for some reason, man, God just dumped 100 kids in your service on one Sunday. Are you ready for them? Like, do you have the leaders for them? I mean, man, I, just talking to God about those kind of awesome, Lord, if you would, if we're going to ask for it, we got to be ready for it. Mm -hmm. And part of that serving, part of that finding people is all part of that. You know, I, I man, I don't want to get to the point where I have 200 kids dropped on me on a Sunday and I have nowhere to put them. Mm -hmm. I would, that would want to break my heart. Like, I, right. sorry, you got to go to your, like, what do I, I mean, I'll, I'll find us, sit on the floor. You know, I'll figure something out, but we're not there. And if we ever want to get there, then we've got to be team building all the time. I mean, the biggest part of our job is recruiting. Well, one of the biggest parts for sure. I love this. Something that Pastor Kelly said, he says, people need to serve the church even more than you need them to serve. Just wow. Um, you are really doing people a favor when you are able to get them involved in a ministry that is fulfilling. How did you grow spiritually when you began to serve? I mean, just to think back to the moment when someone asked you, hey, would you be interested in serving? Would you, would you do this? And how you grow, you grew from that. Um, so how, how did you, how did you grow spiritually when you started to serve? I, I look back to um, when, when I first, I got saved at 21. And uh, probably months into that, both my husband and I got saved in um, the church that I'm at um, as a children's pastor. But um, I remember them asking me if I would be interested, my husband and I, in helping out in the two and three year old class. And we were like, oh, we don't have kids. We don't, we're not sure. And so we said, yes, because we were just like, we love God. We want to help. We want to do whatever it takes. So we went for it. And I remember thinking, like, I don't know if we were made for this because we had a kid escape on us. We had to chase him down before he got to the sanctuary and <laughs> that kind of stuff. But I remember reading the curriculum and, like, studying it because I was like, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to teach the wrong thing. I don't know my Bible. But as I was reading the curriculum, I started like reading my Bible and really wanting to make sure that I was doing what was right. So, um, but just, I remember how I grew that way. So I love to tell people that tell me like, I'm not sure. I always share that testimony with them and how God just helped me learn my word by preparing for class. That's awesome. That mm -hmm. is a great testimony. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Very cool.
Anyone else? Yeah, I'm totally, I'm totally with you. Um, I was the same way. I, um, we jumped in pretty quick um, once we got to a new church because the, the old church we were going to was, it wasn't, we didn't fit in real well. But um, once we moved to the place that we're at now, um, I started in the nursery with the little kids. And then, so it was easy lessons, like little lessons that we got to do. And so that was fun and exciting and to get them excited, but just to see the joy in their face and like to light up, you know, because they're, they're learning all of this for the first time. Um, it was really cool to start getting into it. So then, you know, as I kept doing that, then I grew into going with Sundays and that stuff. So, but really I'm, I learned something new every single week. There's not a time, even a story that I've heard so many times, just, uh, just being able to, just like Christina said, just learning it. But then, you know, as I'm speaking to them, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's almost like a realization every week and seeing it in a different light. And especially the questions they ask. I love hearing the, the things that go through their head. And it's like, oh my goodness, I've never even looked at it that way. So um, it's, it's great. I love it. That's awesome. Excellent. Yeah, I would just say, um, I like started to serve when I was a youth because I wanted to get out of service, just being there all the time. But I just, it really gave me like my own place, you know, like yeah. just uh, a place to belong and to feel needed and responsibility. And like, that's when I really started to grow just, um, yeah. So I think it's great. I, I started in youth too. And I, I grew up a leader now kids ministry that I, th I th from what I can remember, the very one of the very first things I ever did before I came to kids ministry is I got asked to um, dress up as Superman for an Easter an Easter mm -hmm. celebration. Mm -hmm. So they bought me the Superman outfit, and I had the shade. I didn't well, back then. I didn't have facial hair, and I had my comb, my hair flipped over, and the little dangling hair. <laughs> and I came to church as Superman, and the joy that it brought those kids. I was hooked mm -hmm. and it was that one that's how God's wired me man I'm, I'm a positive guy I'm energy I love it God just made me that way and so to see that those inspiring eyes the wonder in their eyes the the wow and I was a lame Superman <laughs> they didn't care <laughs> they're like Superman's at church they had no idea that Superman's not supposed to be five seven you know, like, they don't know that. Um, I loved it. And Christina, with you, in the beginning, studying for my lessons uh -huh. really pushed me to get to know God's word even deeper. I 100% yeah. agree with that. Um, I've got people now that I'm, I'm interested in. I, I want to ask to do the big God story. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, some of their responses, ah, I'm not really good at studying the word. I don't know that I'm capable to do that. And I, and it's just like, listen, you, you can speak eloquently. You can talk. You are full of joy. I yeah. just need to be willing. I will help you with the rest. That mm -hmm. sometimes doesn't come naturally. You being able to be on stage and communicate comes naturally. The other part, we'll get that. We'll get better at that. Yeah. Um, that was a great testimony. Yeah, it's it's true because sometimes I think you get like people that are afraid to, you know, if they're new believers or they've been in the, they've known the Lord for a while, they're afraid to speak or to share. Yeah. So, I mean, funny side note. wasn't eloquent, right? <laughs> um, funny yeah. side note, and then I'm going to ask one last question in regards to this one. Uh, years ago, I had a friend who was a drummer and in his 20s, 30s, and I th yeah, 20s and 30s, he was a drummer for a lot of really big bands um, in the like 70s and 80s. And so still to this day, he would never tell me which band he is because he didn't want to be associated with them. Um, but he, he was, I mean, he partied a lot. He did a, everything that they did. He was a part of all of that. And he had a, like an eye-opening transformation. Mm -hmm. and um, the pastor that he was with one day asked this guy to come and give his testimony on a Sunday morning from the church. Hadn't really coached him, hadn't really talked him through it, yeah. and so, so the uh -oh. first words out of his mouth were, I gave my heart to Jesus, and I bleepity bleepy and so glad I'm bleepity bleep saved. 
and the the church just their mouths just dropped. The pastor was mortified, and he learned a valuable lesson. The dude yeah. had a powerful testimony. He just needed a little work with how to deliver it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Man, we ain't perfect. We never will be. That's the best part of coming alongside and allowing Jesus to walk us through what we get to do because we're imperfect people leading imperfect people and it's a difficult but very rewarding job. Uh, Christina, you mentioned this. How many of you have a monthly recruiting goal? Do you have a monthly recruiting goal? Like, I, man, I'm going to recruit two people this month. Do you? I don't. Start. Yeah. I start. I start. Like I have a little folder right here, and I say I write myself a list of like possible people that I would think would be great at doing certain things. So I'll write it down, and so I'll start, and I'll just kind of look at those over. But I don't. It's like I start, and I don't follow through sometimes, and then then I'm like, oh no, I need a teacher. Then I'm like, I'm on it. I'm starting to recruit, so I'm on recruit mode. So this training kind of helps me to stay on track but um it's like I look at my list and I look at my my um scheduling when I'm looking at my scheduling and thinking okay I know that so so struggling and she's told me that by this date she'd like to kind of you know step out of helping out in this area so then I'm starting to think ahead and recruiting but I would like to do what Kelly said <laughs> to put it on my like once a month yeah. I just have so many people that I'd like to recruit. Um, there are times that I feel like I recruit people and I put them in position. I don't know. This would be a question, but um, like we have a 9 a.m. and an 11 a.m. service. And at the 9 a.m., I feel like our, our four and five-year-old class, sometimes we'll have two kids or maybe just one. And so then you have a teacher there with just one kid. And I'm like, oh, that's so hard because it's not fun for the, I mean, it could be fun, a one-on-one -on -one for a little kid, but sometimes it would be funner. It would be better if they had a big group of kids mm -hmm. than they just have the one. But um, I feel like I recruit because it's not really needed. It kind of falls away or the person's like, I don't know if I'm really needed. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. But, um, so yeah, I'm always trying to recruit, but I, I would like to do it better after this training, after this video, I was like, I need to get better at this too. So, so yeah. Excellent. When I first got hired on here, <clears throat> it was like, they wanted us to be recruiting two people a week, which is a lot. But, um, Whoa. so Whoa. yeah, so I try and get like four leaders a month, like plugged in, like, or like all of that, just like four leaders a month plugged in. It doesn't always happen. <laughs> That's oh, like my goal. That's awesome. That's a great, great goal. Uh, I love it. Kristen. Yeah, I was pretty overwhelmed when I got to that part in the training and how he had it all broken down by each month. And um, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I, think, I think my brain shut down a little bit like, oh, who's left? So um, we do have, um, it's kind of new for us, but we do have like a, a newcomer's lunch uh, I think we do it once a month. Um, I'm not sure. But anyway, so um, everybody on staff is invited to those lunches so we can talk to the new people that are there. Um, but, you know, I never always looked at that as getting, as recruiting volunteers. I more looked at that as like being able to meet the kids that they're bringing and, you know, what kind of kids we can get in class. So I think for me, it's just a shift in my, in my thinking, um, you know, to think of both things really. But um, I, I don't, I don't have a good strategy. And I, yeah, so I wrote that down in my notes as to, as his chart that he had, but then I honestly just <laughs> was like, ah, <laughs> I couldn't even. I couldn't. Overwhelming. Absolutely. Sean, I, I'd love to know what's your secret to, yeah. like, what are you doing to make that four liters a month happen? Wow. Yeah. That's really the next question is what are we, what's your favorite place to recruit people? And then what are some ways that work for you? So Shauna, you seem to be, that's a goal. That's awesome. Yeah. Even if, even yeah. if, even if you're not doing it every month, like you yeah. have the goal and you're trying to hit it. What are you doing? Um, the best thing I can say is 
to get a leader in each classroom that is passionate and dedicated about it. Good. And then just be on them. Like I've asked them, like, do you guys talk about, you know, real kids in your life group? Like, cause they're like, we need more help. I'm like, who are you talking to about it? Like, who are you sharing like your experience about? So it's not necessarily myself recruiting for people it's empowering those team members yeah. to do that and then as well at our church we have a great thing called growth track i don't know if you've ever heard of it before but it's like, um, it's like we push it so much like great you guys because our church gets a lot of visitors and honestly a lot of my leaders have been saved maybe a year so it's like get they we get them saved get baptized and what is your next step growth track growth track growth track and we push them to that and it helps like just for i don't know if you guys know about growth, but it helps refine them whatever and then they get to pick a ministry so every month i usually get one or two from growth track that have picked real kids in any capacity from nursery to elementary to check-in phenomenal so, um, yeah we don't have it all together believe me but it's just awesome. it's the process that helps yep I, I actually wrote down growth track for okay. talk to you guys about that today. We are launching growth track in January. Like our, 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 who was our main kids pastor. I'll be taking over the kids ministry. He's taking over growth track and launching this whole discipleship program. That is my single greatest thing I'm looking forward to is right there is the yeah. natural pipeline of volunteers that growth track will push out. If you don't have a pipeline process at your church for volunteers, I would strongly encourage you to, as a team, get together and discuss, plan, come up with something to make that natural pipeline process happen. And Growth Track is a phenomenal way to do that. Um, is, it, is it like a website, or is it like a or like a system that you keep track on? And you're it is a discipleship process. It's, it's probably the, the smallest description I could give of that. Shauna, you want to maybe mention that a little bit, kind of what what that looks like for you guys. Ours is, again, I can't speak a whole, all, all I can talk about is what it's going to be, not what it is because we haven't launched it yet. Yeah. So um, I, I got to the church a year ago, like last December. And then I found out in January they were launching growth track and they actually were taking um, the whole church through it in the month of January. So our weekend services were growth track. And so each week it's like, um, is it, I get them confused, but I think it's like discovering God, finding freedom, know your purpose, and like make a difference. Or like the four those, weeks. Those are the four weeks right there. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So like know God. Like, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Um, find freedom. Like, is there anything in your life that you need to get rid of? You know, like like I mentioned before, we have a lot of new Christians, so like you can't go partying out on the weekends. You know, all all this kind of stuff. Like, what does the Bible say about these things? And then discover your purpose is like a test. The third week is like, um, spiritual gifts. Yes. Yeah, spiritual gifts and tests, like where are your strengths, all that kind of thing. And with those, sometimes we can help people. Like we know people that would not be great at kids ministries, but look at, look at their giftings. Like you would be great on the safety team or whatever. Yes. And then, um, make a difference is the week four. So like they pick a team and then during, we just do growth track during, one of our services, our second service on Sunday is always growth track. And so if it's the first week of the month, it's week one, whatever. So like so during the fourth week, what after they pick a team, we meet with them during that service and do orientation then and get them on board right then and say, these are the dates you can come and observe and start to train what works for you. Cause we found that works better than following up with them the next week or whatever, but we get them on the hook that day. And so but knowing God, finding freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference are really the the heart of it. And um, yeah, that's. I love it. I love it. It's yeah. powerful. I, we uh, we've already got our person established for that fourth part, the make a difference piece, for somebody that's going to be there as our voice box for the kids ministry on that fourth week. Because it it's not going to be me. I can't on a Sunday get over there, but man, I can empower somebody to right. be that voice. That's going to be the kids ministry cheerleader and it's going to say, Hey man, I'm part of the kids team. Let me tell you all about it. Um, you know, and I love that you said you get them connected that day. I, I wrote that down. Yeah. I'm going to say, Hey, don't just be our voice box. Get them in service that week. Like, yeah, let's get you plugged in 
today. We do a tour that day. So if they don't know what, like some people are like, I don't want to hold babies. I want to be with the elementary kids. They know, but others don't. So we take them around to the classes that day just to like kind of give them an overview of like what they were doing, like two minutes each kind of thing. I love it. And then um, let them pick. Awesome. So yeah. That is fantastic. Aww, Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Man, that's gold right there. Yeah. Um, all right. Man, I could keep talking about this for the next 15 minutes, but we got to continue. Let me, let me add these couple things, and then, and then we're going to move on. Uh, in Organized Kid Men, Andy Vanderlinden says a couple things about this that I love that he wrote. And one of the things was he says, schedule time every week to talk to somebody about volunteering. So, you know, Shauna's got the growth track. One, that, if that's built into your schedule, boom, I've got two people on my list. I'm going to make time to call them every week. But if your goal is two people, four people, 10 people across the board, it looks like we all collectively said about 20 people would be amazing. So how do we get to 20? We've got to make time every week to find those 20 people and pray about it. Block it out, man. You know, on Mondays from nine to 10 o'clock, I'm going to pray about those 20 leaders and where they're going to be. And then on Thursdays, I'm just going to cold call some families and talk to some parents, invite them to lunch, invite them to my house. Um, that's something my wife and I have started doing is in just inviting families over for dinner. You know, Hey man, we love your kids. We'd love to invite you over to our home. Praise God. I can finally do that. Cause it's my first time having a house. And then the last thing is invite the best. I, I would imagine that none of you want the worst volunteer to volunteer. You want the best. So go out and recruit the best. If you know somebody that is an excellent, man, they are excellent in what they do, and you start thinking, man, they're just too busy, you never know unless you ask. Look in your church, in your ministry, and look who's the best in what they're doing and get them on your team because, man, we want the best. Why? We want leaders who are better than us sometimes because they're going to make us better. And the, the more we try to equip and recruit, the better our team will get. So don't just go looking around filling spots with anybody. Invite the best. Ask God to give you eyes to find the best. Invite the best to lunch. Invite the best to coffee or whatever you got to do to get the best on your team. And uh, it will. And then you start, you start making that time, and soon you will hit that 20 mark. Mm -hmm. And then you'll hit 20 and be like, man, I need 20 more because the kids keep pouring in. Yeah. Love it. It's just great stuff. So, all right. Eight goals sequence. Back to our monthly goals talk. Uh, this past month, we started talking about uh, the value of scope and sequence. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't know about you guys. We use a curriculum. So without using a curriculum that has a master plan, scope, and sequence as the foundation, um, it's often likely that it will provide a great time, but – at the end, a destination may not never be intended. So here's my question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how strategic are you um, with your teaching schedule? Okay. Do you plot it out? Do you just kind of figure out what's out there and this is the best deal this month, so I'm going to get this? Or do you think about it the whole year? On Sundays, um, so we use um, high-voltage kids. So they have, um, they have all their stuff available. You can see at any time. I mean, there are things that they launch throughout the year that kind of come up, especially like around holidays, so like the Christmas series or that kind of stuff. So um, we, most of them are six week series. So we at least know, you know, as far as what the next couple are going to be, but we typically have a meeting, like a, just a whole, like all the leaders, we have a staff meeting. So, um, so we, we give out, you know, these are the ones that we have available. And so then we pray about it because it tells you what they're talking about and what the main thing is. So we pray about it. And then so anybody, and it doesn't have to just be us who are like, you know, uh, organizing things, just anybody who's helping out, if they're feeling really strongly, like, Oh, we really got to do this one. Um, so we just try to, we try to facilitate it that way. So we don't have it planned for the whole year, but we, we do probably have three months or so ahead planned, but we always have curriculum available. Um, so we're never without, I guess, in that sense. Um, but yeah, just something that we pray about to see what's coming up. Uh, and then looking ahead to holidays, because that's something that at first we weren't really good at. So when we have like our Easter series or Christmas, we weren't always great at that. So um, that's gotten better. So that, that was a win. So. Love it. 
Um, we are just starting a new series at the beginning of the year. It's through the Life Church um, curriculum base. We, our preschoolers do it and they love it and it's great and they know the Word of God like more than our elementary kids. Oh, so we're switching it to. Um, we're switching to that and that has everything laid out and it does coincide with the holidays. I was not good at that. Like, Oh yeah, Christmas in three weeks. How are we going to, you know, kind of thing, make it happen. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, in the past I've used curriculums that I love that go through the whole Bible. So it's not just like hearing the story of David multiple times a year or whatever. So I, I really like those curriculums that do do that. Like you get to talk about the judges and stuff like that. So I love it. Um, we do the Bible, the Bible app for kids, which is through life, life curriculum too, um, or life church. Um, we love it. We do it for the elementary age group and they have a sequence that they follow, that they work through. And I just follow that. Um, I am adding this year, however, the, um, little buddies for BGMC. So I'm going to yeah. add that. Yeah, I'm excited. I came up with a little idea. We'll see if it works. <laughs> but um, so I'm adding that through uh, from January to December. We're just going to start doing a little, like a little 10 minute segment of uh, Little Buddies. So we're going to add that. But then we do the super book curriculum in our older um, kids. I The kids just love it. Um, we've been doing that for couple years now and so it, it runs through it has a little we can do a sequence and then it runs through again so some of the kids will see it twice but um they don't complain about it they they love and I feel like they mem they memorize their they know their stories or their characters in the bible the and they also know their scripture but I like the life curriculum too because the kids do memorize their scripture it's really awesome by the end of the month um so I think we're doing good. We're, we're plotting. We got an idea. We have a plan. Um, I, I doing the same thing with the older kids. We also do uh, BGMC uh, work on that once a month, every third Sunday. So excellent. I love Life Church. Our our early childhood also does that, and I love the videos that our parents post with their three and four year old that's got the verses down and the motions. Yeah. And they're excited and then I'll see them in church and I'll be like, what's your verse? And then they get shy. Yeah. They get oh, shy. I saw you. <laughs> well, you know your verse. <laughs> you know, I just, oh, I love it. They are. And, and my son's one of them too. So he comes home uh, cause he's five and he's in the, the pre, the pre-K room. And he, again, same thing. He comes to church knowing his word. I love life church and what they're doing. Our yeah. elementary students, we use true fire and they have a scope, scope and sequence. We follow it mostly for our big events, like this past Sunday for our generous Christmas party, we do our own message. And so we just, we don't use theirs yeah. and that's okay. This upcoming Sunday, we'll jump right back on board and continue where we left off. So brief pause and we continue. Why? Because we wanted to do an all church kind of message in youth and children and in adult church. We talked about the three wise men. And so that was this past Sunday. So all of us talked about three wise men and then made it in such a way so that parents, youth and children could all go home on their way home and talk about what you talk about today. We talked about three wise men. True fire doesn't do that because it's only the kids. So we were trying to be intentional with that particular. I'm going to let you guys go for a little bit. I'll be back. Okay. How big that Sunday was. So that's awesome. Um, some things that like that I'm trying to build a little bit more intentionally is and I think we talked about this in our first, our first video chat, Kristen, and that was like certain things that I want, that my youth pastor wants my fifth yeah. graders coming into sixth grade to know. Yes. I'm and so excited about that because I've been working on that and I, I was going to send it to you, but I, I, I don't know. So I've got, I've got like a list, but do you have one? Did you make one? I'm working with my youth, my youth pastor as well on that same thing. I asked him some questions and said, Hey man, I just, I, we are a team and I want to work together. What Yay. are some, like, basic things that you would love your sixth grader to know when they enter sixth grade? And so working together, and a few of those are like baptism of the Holy Spirit. If they haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, my youth pastor was baptized in the Holy Spirit at seven. So he's like, dude, oh, wow. like, let's do it, man. Let's get yeah. there. And so I'm like, yes, let's do it. Yeah. And so, man, introducing it, talking about it, having those conversations. 
And then some of the, just some of our fundamentals, like that they understand, they don't even know all 16 fundamentals by fifth grade, but to understand some of the basic fundamentals that when they go into youth group, it's not like, whoa, I've never heard this before. Um, so yeah. we're, we're going to be intentional in building that into our current curriculum with True Fire. So we'll use like, here are five things the youth pastor wants us to know. So when we're talking about them throughout the year, we'll strategically place those into our curriculum segments. And then my chapel team will come together and we'll build that into the lessons. So yeah. I actually have to go. I'm just going to say sorry, but I have another yeah. meeting that is yeah. button after this. But anyways. Hey, thanks so much for joining us, Sean. We appreciate you. Is there anything we can pray about? Um, my kid, my, all my kids are so sick. So oh, no. oh, <laughs> I don't no. want to go through another holiday with a sick family, but oh. that's probably selfish. Yeah, but. We, we will pray for your kids. We're all going to end here in a few minutes anyway, so we will pray for your kids for okay. sure. Thank you so much. God bless you, Sean. I'm so glad to, so glad to meet you. Yeah. Bye bye. Cool. All right. I think, I think I've got like two more minutes that I'm heading out to. Let's pray. Okay. Close it up, man. Let's let's just All pray. Right. The last one was about positive and negative reinforcement. Um, it's just powerful. Yeah. Those are great. You know? So we can talk about that next month, or you can check out the videos. We don't have to get everything done. Um, I learned a lot from you guys today, so. I took all sorts of notes. Me too. <laughs> and hopefully it's beneficial. Also, just so you know, I'm open to any constructive feedback that you might offer me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you have anything, shoot me an email and say, hey, Kenny, don't do this. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> I will do that. I'll, you will hurt my feelings. I, I am getting better at this all the time, and we're all kids pastors, and we're all growing together. So anything, and if you've got questions that, that I can help you with, I've got questions that you're helping me with, so we're having yeah. a great time. Well, let's close out, man. I'm, I'm so glad that we got to meet this month, and I am glad that you're enjoying the content that Hydrate's been pushing out. It is some good, good stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a great – if you haven't gone on Facebook yet, ask questions. There's a lot of great wisdom that's on that page, and Pastor Kelly is great at – really getting getting answers quickly and connecting with people who have even better answers. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you haven't used it yet, I'd absolutely encourage you to. Let's close off in prayer. Christine, do you have any prayer requests or Kristen, anything? Oh. Yeah, I, I should have pre-thought about that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just, I, um, just prayer for uh, the upcoming Christmas mm. program. I know I have a couple kids in kids church that are, a little girl that has the flu and so we can oh, no. just take her. absolutely yeah we'll just we'll just say a little girl <laughs> absolutely you can do that all right well let's pray then all right father thank you so much for just a great group of just world-class kids pastors that I get to be a part with in this journey of hydrate and I just pray a special blessing on them this month Lord as they uh, go about and get ready for the Christmas season Lord and New Year's father and all of the things that are planned but Lord it's also sickness season and I just pray a, just a special bit of protection, Lord, over Shauna's family, Lord, that you would touch her children, Lord, that they would be healed and, and recuperate from the sickness quickly. Lord, that you would touch this little girl in, in Christina's kids' church, God, that would be healed of the flu quickly, God. It would just be gone so that she could get back to 100% and enjoy the season with her family and enjoy kids' church. And Lord, I just, would you protect all of our kids? Lord, they would not get sick this season, but Lord, it would just be a great, great end of the year. Lord, bless these kids, pastors. Lord, as we continue to grow and get better, Lord, help us as we recruit. And Lord, give us eyes and, and help us to connect the right conversations so that we can equip our kids' ministries with world-class leaders. Lord, we thank you that the harvest is ripe. Lord, would you help us find, Lord, the best of the best so that we can continue to provide our children with the best that you've got for us. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory and all the honor, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you guys. Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. I, uh, I might try and switch the Monday to a Friday next month to see if we can get any other people. We've got 12. Yeah. And I've spoken to four of you now, which is awesome. Yeah. There are eight more out there that I have not heard from at all. 
Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's hard. Like sometimes you, you, know, you think you think you're like falling behind and you're not sure if you should do the video, but I think it's great to just do the video, even if you're falling behind totally. because, um, some great, um, encouragement goes on in this video and you're doing great. Oh. I like the fact that it's so, um, it's comfy and it doesn't matter where you're at. You can get on the video. So you're in your car. You can do it. <laughs> in your car, you your phone's falling down every two minutes. Yeah. If That's your right. computer's about to die, you're good. <laughs> you guys yeah. are awesome. I'm about to go blackout right now. Right. <laughs> Bye. God bless you guys. Merry Christmas. God we'll love you. Love this little you guys. And um, we'll see you next month. See ya. Bye-bye.